Hey everybody, we're back here with another Rapid game. Playing against, uh, looks like Ch Chapara, rated 1558. We're going to start off with knight f3. They're going to go for e6, okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and play c4, get a pawn up in the, towards the center of the board. At least aiming in the, and aiming in the center direction. So, black goes c5, okay, so they kind of match here with me a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and go for d4. Just trying to strike in the center. This might end up kind of being a Sicilian defense looking situation here. Very likely that uh, I'll play the move e4 pretty soon. Black goes for knight to c6 here. Um, another idea in this kind of position is to play knight to b5 in towards the d6 square. Um, g3 is another move in this position. Uh, even knight c3 is perfectly fine. I think I'm going to go for the knight to b5 idea. Just to kind of aim towards d6 here, which is a little bit of a soft square. Whenever black plays c5 and e6, the d6 square becomes a bit weak, and we can maybe uh, pick up the bishop pair, for example, if um, if we get the check on this square pretty soon. So knight to b5. If black plays d6, then I might be able to play bishop f4 and target that pawn. And if black plays d5, we'll be able to maybe trade the pawns, bishop f4, and look for, um, look for knight c7 checks pretty soon. So... One option here is uh, that, that's kind of interesting is something like bishop to c5. If black had played something like bishop c5 and I do make the check, there is actually some uh, situations where they could play king e7 sometimes. And they're looking to kind of want me to take the bishop on c8, the rook takes back. They get a lead in development, but their king can't castle. And it's, a, it's kind of an interesting situation there. But black does go for d5. And I'm going to go ahead and trade the pawns. If the queen takes, we have knight to c7 check. If the pawn takes, we'll have bishop f4. Uh, we do also have queen, oops, excuse me. We do also have queen takes d5 as an option here as well, because if the queen takes back, knight to c7 check, forks the king and the queen on d5. There are some trickiness things there though. If I play queen takes d5, black could play like bishop e6, and then I trade queens, and I do end up ahead of pawn, but I'm behind on development. My king is you know, it takes some time to get out of the center of the board, so that can actually be a little bit messy. So I think I'm just going to continue with bishop f4, though, uh, going from my original idea. If black throws it a check, I can play knight c3 protecting the knight. If black checks with the bishop, I can again go knight c3, or even knight d2 in that case. And um, I guess they might have bishop a5 to cover the fork, but knight to d6 will also still be available there. So if black checks... Probably the best defense, I'd say, to check maybe and go bishop a5. But black is going to have to figure out how to stop this uh, this fork here. If the queen checks, knight c3. If they could try to go d4 or anything like that, that could be a bit interesting. At the very at, at the worst case scenario, I could always take on d4, but I still might be able to fork, pick up the rook. They take on c3. Oops, close that up. Um, they take on c3, so that kind of situation can be um, a little bit tricky, I'd say. But I should be winning some, you know, some form of material here for sure. Or at the very least, forcing black to play this kind of weird situation with the bishop on a5. So, a little bit of a tricky spot. Knight to e5 is not the answer here, though. I think I'm just going to take the knight for free. Queen check, nothing's been stopped. I can still just play knight c3 and not too much uh, going on for black in this case. I, I don't think black now has a good defense. Uh, we're just going to go knight c3 and protect the knight. Still knight c7 is a threat. And we're just up a piece, so this is already uh, you know really bad for black at this point. d4. Um, we can just check. Let's see, I want to see if I can maybe, if there's like a mating sequence or something, check. If the king goes to d7, queen takes d4 check. If the king comes to e7, I can still play queen takes d4, actually. I guess I do have to be a little careful. If I check, he moves and take the rook. There might be queen takes e5. The knight's hit. I'm definitely still off material and better. Um, but I feel like the I might as well check. Probably going to take on d4 with the queen next move. If the king comes up, we take with the queen. We threaten mate. We threaten the rook. Black is not going to be able to defend everything very well here. 
I would like to play a knight d5 check, but that knight's pinned, so that's not um that's not really working out here. Um I don't think bishop d6, queen takes, and he takes the knight. That doesn't work out. If I take the rook, he takes the bishop, maybe. So I think I am gonna take the pawn. I'm threatening queen d6, I'm still threatening the rook. Um yeah, there's just not a way for black to protect everything at once. I guess black could maybe play f6, um, giving the king the f7 square, but knight f6 doesn't stop the queen d6 mate. We're just going to uh, pop the queen in there and get the checkmate there. Okay, so fairly fairly quick game in this one, so let's go ahead and uh, analyze it to see what black could have done better, maybe. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so game starts off in knight f3, e6, c4, c5. D4, trade of pawns, knight to c6. I think black has played fine so far. I mean, every every move he's made has been logical here. Knight to b5. Um, black goes for d5, which I think is a little bit of a mistake, though maybe him taking back on d5 is really the problem, as we'll see in a moment. I think a probably more logical way of playing here is something like d6. And then I would probably follow it up with something like bishop f4. Black might play e5. Um, I might move the bishop away at this point, maybe something like back to d2. The downside for black in this kind of position, once, they, um, once they've played e6 and then e5, the pawn being up here and there's no c pawn on the board anymore, now the d5 square is pretty weak. You could imagine that maybe one day I can get a second knight up to d5 and maybe get a fork on c7 in that way. Um, so something like that might be an idea. Uh, bishop f4 encouraging the move e5, I retreat, and then d5 is very weak here. Another option could simply be just knight c3 or something like that. Um, maybe even after e5, maybe I can play bishop g5 here, actually, because if the queen takes, I get the fork and pick up the rook. So, some different ideas like that. Um, but at least that's better than, you know, the, what happened in the game, being a uh, pretty quick uh, black got in trouble pretty quickly there. I do think another move that's available here is bishop c5. The idea being, if I do make the check, um, well, first of all, black could trade the bishop for the knight, and that's, of course, going to be better than losing material like they did in the game. But I think even a move like king e7 is an idea. The The thought behind this is that if I do take the bishop, the rook takes back. Um, black can't castle the king, and I do have the bishop pair. But black has a nice lead in development, and black will be able to, um, you know, move the knight, rook e8, king f8, and kind of fix the king position pretty quickly. So this kind of position definitely gives black some compensation, even though black can't um, castle the king at this point. Um, maybe instead of uh, taking on c8, maybe the better way to play here is something like knight e4, and maybe try to go after this bishop. Because if this bishop moves back, then you can see ideas of, like, queen d6 check being very annoying, um, knight c3, bishop g5, bishop f4. The, the dark squares are still very... Um, you know, it's still very weak here in this kind of situation. You could even just start piling up on that weak pawn. So, um, yeah, I think the move d5, though, is getting into some trouble, because after pawn takes, um, black took back, and then bishop f4 is already putting black in a bit of a tough spot, I think. Um, maybe his best move was to make this check. I play, I think I would have played knight to d2. If I play knight c3, it gets a little bit messy, because knight, because, uh, um, Pawn to d4 is a little a little tricky here. If I check and pick this up, you know, or sorry, he might even Yeah, if he moves the king, I guess I can I don't know, king here, for example. If I take the rook, he takes on c3, this gets a little bit messy, though I should probably be um I should probably be fine here once I get castled. But maybe black could even play queen takes c7 and pawn takes c3. As weird as this looks. This is actually uh, very difficult for me to stop. I actually can't, I, I don't see a way to, to, to defend this kind of position. And if I take c3, bishop takes, I have to give the queen up to stop the, the check there. So maybe after bishop b4, I think I would have played like knight to d2. I think that's what I was intending to play. And then black, I thought, would have to play something like bishop a5. Maybe they could move the king to avoid the fork. But let's say they do bishop a5. Um, I might have knight d3 check. At the very least, I can just push the pawn and continue developing. Maybe I throw in the check. Um, I don't know, the king moves, maybe start doing something like this. And, you know, black has an isolated pawn. Maybe I could even take the bishop on c8 um, and then kind of continue like this. But, you know, black gets elite development. It gets a little bit messy here. 
it, there's some uh, kind of dynamic stuff back and forth going on here. Black's got um, the rook in the game. His king can't castle. He's got extra space. But if I can kind of untangle my pieces, I should be better. But the problem is maybe Black can, you know, maybe Black could uh, play actively in that situation. So I do think that's probably the best way that Black could have responded here. Um, but the move 95 is definitely not the uh, not the defense that works here. We just take the knight for free, and then knight c7 check, take on d4. Black is just lost at this point. No good way to stop the attack on the rook. No way to stop queen d6 mate, or queen d6 check at least. Probably f6 is the best move to at least prolong the game a bit, but then um, we could just play... This isn't make because of king f7, but we could maybe just check, take the rook. And this is going to be, you know, good enough. If it, uh, we're up a piece, um, we're up a rook. This is just a huge material advantage for sure. So, yeah, th this uh, particular opening gets black into a little bit of trouble, especially if they don't know what to do, when they don't know how to deal with the knight d6 check, and then especially this fork on c7 coming. So probably bishop a5, uh, b bishop b4 checked a5 was the way to at least try to hold the position together. Um, but even there, it seems like it could be, um, you know, it's, it's up to Black to kind of find that idea um, in that kind of situation there. So anyways, though, uh, kind of an interesting game. Pretty quick one here, but uh, definitely some ways of playing aggressively in the opening, uh, moving our pieces and making threats, you know, setting up this fork. Black kind of uh, has a tough time dealing with it. They don't defend accurately, and we're able to win the, uh, the game here. So... That's it for this game, though. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you around in the next video. All right, have a good day. Bye-bye.